Welcome back to another volume of Truly Disturbing Tales from Reddit. Today we're going to be narrating three new and settling stories, taken directly from the platform. I encourage you all to sit back, grab a snack, and enjoy these terrifying personal accounts. Now, without any further delay, let's jump right in. I'm a 22-year-old woman and my husband is 25. Last night, he woke me up around 11.50 p.m. to tell me that someone has been knocking on our door and ringing our apartment doorbell for about 10 minutes on and off. He woke me so I could possibly ID the person. Once I looked out our upstairs window, I saw the man walk into his car in our apartment parking lot, which was across the street from our unit. He was wearing blue jeans and a gray t-shirt, medium build, maybe 30 years old, and a blonde man. He wasn't covering his face or anything. But the thing is, he was carrying what looked like resistance bands, or maybe even rope. He sat in his car for about three minutes while I was on the phone with dispatch. Then he came back to our door and knocked hard for another few minutes. Dispatch advised me that the police were on their way, and they then hung up. I started videoing the vehicle. I read out the tag number, make and model, and just watched as he put his car in park and reverse over and over again. Out of seemingly nowhere, he backed out of the parking lot and started to rush away, but not before the officer arrived and pulled him over. My downstairs neighbor knocked on my door and told me that he had been peering into her little children's windows and was pounding on her door as well. She said that her husband had left about one minute before he started knocking at the door. She said he saw her children through the window, and that's why he continued knocking. Our doors are right next to one another, so he probably didn't know what door he wanted open. He had been watching us as well, through our upstairs window. So I turned off all of the lights, shut the blinds, all while I called the police. The police never contacted us for a statement, though. I've reached out to the dispatch about any update, and I'm waiting to see if any action was taken. We're keeping our eyes peeled to see if he's been following us. I'm replacing my porch light bulbs with motion detectors and putting bars in our windows and door tracks. Both my neighbor and my family are panicked, to say the least. He had to have been outside of our house for about 25 to 30 minutes total. In the time since, I haven't heard anything from the police, but I did look back at the video that I took and I remember that car. I was walking my dog at 8 p.m. about a week ago for him to go to the bathroom, and this car was driving really slowly through our parking lot and parked a few spots down from where I was letting my dog sniff. It just sat there with the car running. When I tell you that my ears started ringing and I got an awful feeling, I'm not joking. I turned around, went home, didn't give my dog a chance to pee, and shut every door and window up tight. I think this man has been staking out our apartment building, both me and my neighbors. Update. After about a week of waiting, I finally heard from the arriving officer that night. He was unsurprisingly vague this entire conversation, but suffice it to say, the answers that I got to my questions were far from satisfactory. After he pulled the man over, he simply let him go. When I asked why he would do such a thing when he was obviously prowling, possibly with restraints in his possession, the police officer simply said the man had a lot of different possessions in his car, and the officer wouldn't be able to prove that any of them were with criminal intent. When I asked what purpose, if any, this man would have for knocking so late at night on doors while also lurking around windows, the officer said that the man had stated that he was there to meet somebody off of a dating app and that he was forthcoming with the information, so the officer felt comfortable to let him go. As we get off the phone, I feel that my blood is starting to boil. I can't help but feel like the police response to this whole situation was incredibly lackluster. While I have no confirmation for what I'm about to say, it's in my heart of hearts that this man had the worst intentions in mind, and that he was likely trying to gain entry into the apartment that had those children in it. Lock your doors, everybody. I'm going to start this off by saying 
I don't live in the best area, but it's close to my kid's school and it's what we can afford. So it's the middle of the afternoon and I'm in line at a stoplight waiting for it to change so I could get to the school to pick up my older kids. I also had my toddler with me. While I was waiting, I heard my passenger side door handle move like someone was trying to open it. I always lock my car doors out of habit. My car is older, so they don't lock automatically when I start the car, like some newer models do. I look over, and there's an older woman aggressively trying to open my car door. My window is cracked for a bit of fresh air, but it's not all the way down. She reached up trying to get the window to go down further, but couldn't squeeze her fingers in. She said, excuse me, I need you to help me out. I need a ride. Now, I'm all for helping people, but not when they're trying to get into my car with no explanation. Like, you just don't do that. I ask, do you need me to call 911? The woman says, no, you need to help me. Let me in. Come on now, help me out. She pulls on the door again, then alternates with trying to pull the window down. Lucky for me, the light changed at this moment, and I told her, sorry, but I have to go. I can't help you. I seized my opportunity to take off, watching her in the rearview mirror of my car stroll off to the sidewalk until the light turned red again and she crouched down and seemingly crept up to the next unsuspecting car, perhaps to try this whole venture again. As I got further and further away, I lost sight of the intersection, but said a quick prayer in the hopes that this woman doesn't make entry into anybody else's car. Fast forward a few weeks and the situation has all but left my mind when I'm watching the morning news as I'm getting my children ready for school one day. Apparently an elderly woman had been driving down one of our main streets when all of a sudden her passenger side door was flung open and a disheveled middle-aged woman jumped into the passenger seat. She used a knife to coerce the older woman to drive from ATM to ATM, withdrawing her limit at each spot. When the assailant had all but depleted this older woman's checking account, she escaped with all the funds, but not before physically assaulting the woman for good measure. The police caught up to her a few hours later, taking her into custody with all the money that she had from the crime spree still on her person. I'm sure you can guess by now that the woman displayed on our TV screen was the very same woman that tried to pry her way into my car. I know that having my car doors locked allowed us to dodge a bullet that day, and I still feel terribly for that elderly woman and the things that she had to go through. As children, our parents tell us not to get into cars with strangers. I think the opposite can be just as important. Don't give strangers the opportunity to get into your car. Last year, I was staying in a university hall for my senior year. It's a private building, so not connected to the university and out in the city near the main town. We have a car park, but nobody really uses it because we're all poor students and it costs money to park there. So mine was one of only two or three cars at any given time. The car park isn't well lit and it's to the side of the building. So you have to walk for a minute or two to get to the main door. I was sitting in my car one evening after getting back from the gym, just scrolling on my phone because my seat was warm and it was dark and raining outside so I couldn't be bothered to get up yet. I was reading an article when somebody started knocking on my window, which was really odd. It was a man dressed all in black. He started telling me how his friend had seen me through the window and thought I was really attractive. So could he have my number? I responded, no, that's a bit odd and I don't feel comfortable with it. He continued to be insistent for a while, practically begging me to get out and give them my number or my social media details, telling me I should come over and speak to his friend, who was, weirdly, standing at the other end of the car park, furthest away from the building. I kept saying no and scrolling on my phone to show that I wasn't interested. He finally relented and walked away. After that exchange, I texted one of my friends to ask if he'd come and get me and walk with me to the building. As I was waiting, this man returned but now with his hood up, and he began banging loudly on my window, saying that I was being rude, ungrateful, while calling me all other sorts of names as well. 
I kept staring at my phone and pretended that I couldn't hear him. He then started trying my door handle. After realizing that it was locked, he began violently pushing into my car. I did my best to ignore him and maintain my composure, although I felt rattled to my core. I texted my friend again, asking him to bring other friends with him. My friend was taking a long time to read my message, and I was terrified, but for some reason I didn't think to call the police, probably because I was scared of things escalating even further. The guy at my window had calmed down after a few minutes and walked off, saying that he'd leave me alone now. However, I watched him out of the corner of my eye, join up with his friend, and then three or four other men emerge from the shadows. They walked so that they were out of sight, but I could still see them lingering as they kind of circled around my car and moved towards the building. They lingered for a while, until luckily another car came, which was obviously full of students going to a party due to the loud music and singing going on inside. This group of men left as they saw these people arrive, so I was able to latch onto the party car of people and make my way inside. Once home, the friend that I had been texting finally responded. He said that he'd actually heard about these guys before. Apparently they'd followed another girl into the building and into the elevator a few days prior then stood in it making really gross sexual comments towards her. She had to run to her door and lock it, where they then stood outside knocking and whispering for her to open it. We were able to report this to the building, who, to their credit, then hired a permanent set of security staff. We also got the CCTV footage of both incidents and were able to pass this on to the police. So, weird men harassing young women at my university building? Let's never meet you pervs. <laughs>